So in here, what I might also do is get a path to another JSON file, which is actually going to render our map itself. And we might as well do it now anyway. Um, so map path, let's call it map path. So let's do that file now. So we'll do txt file. We'll say that's dungeon map.json. So in here, what I want to do, this is going to be completely an array. So in here, we're going to have an array of objects. We're going to say x is zero, y is zero. And the name that we want to use is going to be GUI wall one, let's see. Let's copy that. Oops, what am I doing? Come on, sorry. <laughs> so I'll just uh, copy and paste this. Put it in another X position. Let's make that GUI wall two, let's say. And then we'll draw some floors as well. So we'll have a one at thirty-two. So we'll say go walk, go floor one. We've only got one floor one anyway. So I'll just uh, copy and paste this once again. So we'll have four tiles that we can draw. We'll say that's thirty-two by thirty-two there. So we'll save that. So when we take a look at this map path, we know it's going to be an array when we parse it. So we're going to say var obj, once again, json.parse, assets, .get text. So again, we're going to be taking a reference to that map path, and that map path is going to be a reference to this uh, path here, dungeon map.json. And in here, what I'm going to say is for i in zero dot 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 abj dot data no abj dot length because it's already a, an array and within each one of those we're going to say var tile is equal to abj we're going to take a reference to the index of that object so each object within this array so the first one is going to be it's going to have an X, a Y, and a name. So in here, instead of doing the set, what I'm going to do is get a, is do a get. So I'm going to reference the tile sheet again, and now I'm going to draw tiles. So I'm going to say graphics. So the graphics is going to be to a sprite. Yeah, this needs to be a sprite. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that needs to be a sprite, not a bitmap. Don't know what I'm doing. So, we'll take a reference to that graphics. And then this is going to be an array. So, this is going to get the X position of the tile. So, this is going to be tile.x, tile.y. And now we're going to use our table that we set up earlier to get the index of our variable. So we're going to put in tile.name. Now we've already set this all up, so we don't really need to do anything else. So this is our class called tile map, where we want to init it, and then we want to draw a map based on a particular path. So let's Let's put this into action and see what it looks like, shall we? So in here, I'm going to say, at the top of our main class, we're going to say private var map, tile map, right? And I'm going to comment all of this out because we don't need it. So I'm going to press Control Q on my keyboard and flash to pull up to do that. I'm going to comment all of that out as well. Make sure that doesn't do anything. Okay. 
So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to initialize that map. So that's going to be a new tile map. We want a bitmap data. So we're going to get the bitmap data that we want. So that's going to be get bitmap data. And that is going to be one in tile sets. Did we say it was this one? I think it was. So we'll copy that. We'll say image slash tile sets slash that. So I just copied and pasted the file name there so that it can be referenced. I believe it is that one. Uh, yeah, this one looks that way. Okay. So we know what that is. So now what we want to do is we want to init the map. It should be there. Public function init. It is there. What is it doing that for? Huh. Well, I know it's there, so just slash develop being stupid oh it is doing it <laughs> so in here we want to take the path to the data so this is going to be info tiles.json info slash dungeon tiles.json and then map dot draw map and then we're going to take once again info to dungeon map .json. and now what we want to do is add the map to the screen so let's take a look at the results right so just uh, cl collapse all of those open up command prompt and type in who Hxlib run openfl build project.xml and I am going to target Nico. Oh, unexpected line 36. What have I done? Oh. Because we're using the new keywords, we need to initialize the constructor. We need to call the constructor. The only way we can do that is by doing this. Whenever you use the open and close parenthesis, you, that is implied as a call to a function. New, when you use the new keyword, you're, that's implied as, that's construed by the compiler as a call to the constructor. So you always need to make sure that you have that open and close parenthesis there in order to make that work. Okay, now we've got even more errors. Okay, so we need to fix that. Tile map, line 22. Oh, right, yes, of course. We need to remove that because obviously we're using sprite now. No longer using that. Missing super constructor call. Well, yeah. Array access not allowed on length int forty. OBJ dot data i. That's an array, so I'm not sure what's going on there. I think that should be fine now. Maybe. Hopefully it doesn't continue complaining. No, it's still complaining. What is it doing that for? You know, I really do hate it when they... 
That's a dynamic. And that's a dynamic. Should be implied. Maybe I'll stop complaining now. Yeah, it's working now. That's weird. Okay, hakes imply that that's a dynamic. This is returning a dynamic, therefore the object is a dynamic. Come on, swear it out. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, so let's let's test this and see what's going on. So we're going to double click on this RBG tutorial.exe. Hopefully everything should work properly and oh interesting so it's sort of working but isn't so as you can see we're getting the variables but we haven't actually got the correct tiles so that's something we need to fix so we've got dungeon tiles here the width height well obviously that's working we've got x Thirty two, why is thirty two? We are doing that correctly, right? <laughs> okay, obj dot data and tile rex, obj dot x, obj dot y. Okay, finally got there in the end. So now that we have our tiles, let's take a look at the fix. Um, so as you can see we've got different tiles here so what does it look like now so we've got tile info x and tile info y this is, a, this is actually the error that was going on here so I actually had obj.x obj.y here and I, and I generally thought that was fine but obviously that's the obj that's the root of this here instead of going into data and taking a look at each of the tile information of each of the tiles so that was uh my bad <laughs> we all make mistakes and sometimes we completely miss them so that's now a working tile map um, so what i'm now going to do is i'm going to go away and put this onto github so that you can all take a look at it and also what i'm going to do is I will yeah <laughs> I will complete this so that we can then of course continue working on creating our own sort of tile maps uh, eventually and maybe even creating our own maps so thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed this tutorial on how to render tiles on the screen and I will see you next time